Christopher L. Malone is an English teacher, a local musician, and the author of his second book, Harold in the Name of Love. Chris, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So this is your second book. Tell us what Harold in the Name of Love is about. Uh, so I've been describing uh, Harold in the Name of Love as a, uh, a dark comedy about uh, a bad marriage, but mm -hmm. only one person in the relationship knew it was a bad marriage. <laughs> so um, it involves uh, death and it involves the grieving process. Like, how do you come back from uh, having your your partner die, and then you're you know you're confronted with some ugly truths. So um, it it's all of that, but then there's also this really weird sort of uh, ghost story element, mm -hmm. um, uh, which is to say, uh, Harold is being haunted by his dead wife, but not for the reasons that he thinks they are. Right. So I want to I don't want to get in too much to it, but. Um, I don't want to spoil it, right. but uh, don't want to give too much away. There's a there's a pretty decent twist to the reason for the paranormal occurrences. So, <laughs> well, as you mentioned, I, I also would agree that this is a dark comedy. Yeah, S but it's it certainly explores some themes, love and friendship throughout the book. What other themes did you explore in this in writing this? Um, there there were uh, a few characters that were. Uh, a lot of fun to write and and in the writing process it, it really did force me to think about a few things mental health being one of them mm. um, Harold uh, when we meet him is depressed and he's attempting to take his own life mm -hmm. um, very methodically yeah very methodically uh, chapter one is is titled the fourth attempt so mm -hmm. uh, these attempts keep failing and he doesn't understand why um, but in that process, it's, you know, he, he's not talking to anybody either. He's, he's very privately trying to hold on to this grief while putting on a face uh, to convey, like, everything's normal, everything's fine. And it's not fine. It's not okay. And uh, the same held true with his marriage. Um, it was not okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, oftentimes we get into these relationships uh, where well, we're not communicating, we're not talking to each other. Um, and by the time you get to the end of the novel, you think, I hope you think, um, God, what could have been avoided if they just were honest with each other and had this conversation? And so there's a really fun way where I try to facilitate uh, these two people getting to have that conversation finally. Um, and that was, that was a joy to write. Uh, I talk about uh, therapy in the book, which is something I think as genera generationally, I think we're getting more comfortable with, mm -hmm. uh, which is a good thing. I think that's the, the more we know, the better. And I think we know more now than we ever did before about how the human brain works, about how we harbor emotions and feelings. Uh, and we can't turn back the clock on that. Like we, we can't put that information back in the box. We know how mental health affects us on a daily basis. We know how our body handles stress better than we ever have before. Mm -hmm. um, and we have this really weird, pointless sort of discussion about, well, that's not how we did things back, back in my day. That's we, well, we didn't share our feelings because we didn't know any better. Right. Now we do. Um, and relationships today have the chance to be some of the greatest relationships human beings have ever cultivated hmm. because we understand now more than ever the importance of communication yeah. and that's not just with Harold and Nancy in the book but that's also with uh, Harold and his best friend uh, Damon right. the, uh, the rock star the has-been rocker who's yeah. trying to make a comeback so uh, there's he was a really fun character to write so so it seems like there's so much in this book that's very relatable to to any audience uh, with relationships and mental health how did you come up with this story? Uh, any story idea comes up uh, in really weird ways. I wrote the first chapter, uh, I would say it was 2012. Uh, there's a program that happens every year in the month of November uh, called uh, NaNoWriMo, which is 
uh, short for uh, National Novel Writing Month. Oh, okay. And all the English teachers um, in the building that I worked in when I worked for Harford County Public Schools, we all would throw our hats and say, this is going to be the time we do it. I came up with this great idea. And the idea was based on a friend. Uh, I won't say his name uh, for the sake of privacy, but he had this really scary thing happen to him. He was driving down I-76 in Philly, and he was having an argument with his girlfriend. And while driving, his girlfriend just turned around and started kicking him what? while he was driving. And it, it, it he That's almost horrifying. died. He had to pull over, uh, and that was clearly at the end of that relationship. Uh, <laughs> that sounds like it was time. But um, that was such a scary way to, to all, and, and my buddy's this really great guy. Uh, I love him to pieces, and I, that would be a terrible way to go. And, and I kind of had an obsessive moment about that, and I thought, like, what if something did happen in that? Mm -hmm. And I kind of developed this story of if that was the way your partner died, how would you process that moment? And so that's kind of the moment that happens for Harold. I wrote the first chapter. Uh, my brother, who I dedicated the book to, loved it. Um, and I was getting ready to write the rest of the book, and I talked to my mother about it. Mm -hmm. And I told her about this character, Nancy, that I was coming up with. And she said, oh, Christopher, I don't even want to read it because, <laughs> honestly, it's not going to be any good. <laughs> Nancy doesn't even, women don't do that. <laughs> and, and she had me shook. So I, um, I didn't write it. And it, and it kind, kind of collected dust. My brother would, would you know, call, and every now and again he'd ask me about Harold. And when are you going to write the rest of that book? And then... Um, about two years ago, after I published my first uh, book, um, Hang Dog, I, I was kind of twiddling my thumbs, like, well, what do I do now? And Nick had always asked, like, well, if I were to try to write that book today, because I was obviously a few years older, had a little more experience with women, um, and really trying to understand um, that sort of mentality. It's very hard to write uh, from a, a female perspective while trying to honor and respect um, that uh, unique point of view. Mm -hmm. I only know so much being a guy, uh, but I grew up with a lot of sisters and uh, a very vocal mother, a very vocal, uh, wonderful wife, my wife, Chassie. And I would, I would talk about things, I'd bounce ideas off. And my goal was, can I make a female character that isn't just a two-dimensional villain, mm -hmm. like the quintessential evil woman? Because right. that's not real. Right. It's, it's, that doesn't really exist in the real world. Uh, you know, as my wife likes to say, there's one side of the story, there's the other side of the story, and then somewhere in the middle is the truth. <laughs> and That's I true. tried really hard to give both sides of the story, and hopefully the reader will think it over and say, all right, then this is what the truth is. Where can people read your book? Uh, it is available online. Uh, Amazon.com. Uh, it's also uh, published through uh, Silverbow Publishing. Mm -hmm. So uh, my publishers out of uh, Vancouver, Canada, which is pretty cool. They're an independent publisher. They mainly do poetry, so they took a chance on my book, and they've been very nice to me about that. Uh, I also sell locally um, in Elkton with mm -hmm. Patty Paulus uh, at Pout the, the, the Pout and the Page. And as a matter of fact, I've got a book signing coming up. Uh, it was June 7th, it's first Friday mm -hmm. um, in June. Uh, there's going to be another writer there. Uh, there's several great works of art. If you've never been to uh, Palette on the Page. Mm -hmm. Or is, First Friday. Or yeah, First Friday in general. I, Main Street in Elkton in general is a, a great place to be on any night of the week. Yeah. But on a First Friday, it's, it's definitely uh, got a lot going on for it. So I'll be doing a book signing there and then copies of, of this book as well as my first novel, Hangdog. Cool. will also be available, yeah. Cool. And before we let you go, as we mentioned, you are a musician. You're in a couple of bands. Yeah. Where can we see you play? Uh, so I've got a new band uh, called Tip of the Whisker, and we are playing uh, May 23rd uh, at Power Plant Live in Baltimore City. We're really cool. excited. That's our first show with our new front man, uh, Micah. Uh, you can look us up on Facebook, Tip of the Whisker. Um, and uh, then... I'm, I'm in a local uh, band, Plan B, mm -hmm. with uh, Rob Masmiano over at uh, Tidewater Tattoos. Yep. 
uh, my buddy Sam Anderson, Dave Masmiano, um, and my longtime great friend Ben Day on drums. Uh, Plan B, we we play all over. We've played at the uh, Northeast VFW. We play a lot over at Minahanes, mm -hmm. right there in Elkton. So um, you can look us up online as well. Um, and we've got a couple of shows coming up. Um, I don't know them off the top of my head. Oh, sorry, guys. Fine. I don't that's know them fine. off the top of my head. That's fine. I'm sorry. I didn't so. uh, but Plan B, look <laughs> us up. So, Local author Christopher L. Malone, the author of the new Herald in the Name of Love. Thanks so much. Thank you.